In midlife, how do you go about making the decision to stay married during or after a crisis? Raymond Hamilton and Geraldine Mayo are here to discuss. Welcome back to the show. Thank, Thank you, you, Sarah. So, what are the most common crises that couples face in their middle age? I'm talking sort of 50 plus, I suppose. It could be illness, um, redundancy, redundancy uh, death of a close relative or child, um, financial crisis. Or um, a husband deciding to go with a younger woman for a moment, recovering his um, vitality or something. <laughs> Buying a Ferrari. <laughs> Buying a Ferrari or a... Yes, or a Harley Davidson. That sort of thing. So if we find ourselves in a crisis, from the women who come onto your website, Wiser Now, what do you find, who are the ones who end up sticking it out with the husband? And who are the ones who end up saying, this is just too hard, I've got right. to leave? Well, I, I sort of feel I'm a little bit more um, qualified to answer this, because Geraldine usually says next when a crisis <laughs> happens in one of her marriages. What she's saying is, I cut and run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, had enough of him! <laughs> but, so, but, but you've in fact yes, so for me, um, <laughs> over the last couple of years, we've, the illness crisis happened. And I had never actually thought of it. I mean, we all think we are going to be wonderful forever. But my husband said to me one day, he's had um, polio and he was suffering with post-polio syndrome. Can you explain what that is? <clears throat> that is the debilitation of the muscles, which are um, a lot less than we have to deal with, mm -hmm. because normally uh, it's a virus that attacks the muscles uh, when, the, when polio actually strikes as a mm. child, so they don't come back. Okay. So you're left with a lot less in the way of muscle mass. And how's it affected him? Well, it, his ability to walk then ruined his um, spine. Mm -hmm. And he lives with pain every day, doesn't yes. he? Yes. So mm. it got to the stage where when he went to a surgeon, the surgeon said, well, I can do it, but I can't guarantee you're going to walk afterwards. Meaning an operation. So, meaning mm. an operation. So he came to me and said, well, you can make the decision whether, um, and I, I will not blame you at all if you decide to go, this is, this is, and, and, and oh, oh so it was terrible. Oh, I and I thought, oh, this isn't what I signed up for, but there's no way. I can't imagine. No, so we'll face this together. And we did, and very fortunately, he was able to walk afterwards. And we will always have these problems, but it is something that, I mean, they'll never take away his um, ability to communicate because he's a talker. He's a great communicator. <laughs> he's <Yeah>. compensated. <laughs> so it is wonderful. I mean, the man I married is still the man I married. And um, a lot of the women who we are seeing on the website have problems with husbands who are recovering stroke victims. Um, it's the illness, they usually stay with the partner. Because how could you leave, you know, in, you know, how could you live with yourself if you left a oh, man who was, had had a stroke? I mean, is that what you, you find? I mean, you joke that you left each time you yes. had a crisis and your second husband was quite sick. How did you bring yourself to leave? Well, that was really probably why I was staying. Um, and I think if we're all absolutely honest, he couldn't look at me every day knowing that, mm. and so he left. And I, I think when I think about it and talking about it now mm. makes me realise that that he um, had a failing kidney and was going through this trauma, and he really didn't feel that he could talk to me about it. It was quite sad, really, when I look back. At the time, when you're in it, you don't realise mm. it. But um, he wasn't communicating it to me and so I felt very very vulnerable too because I didn't really know what was going on so and quite often what happens when you, when you've got some common grief whatever it is um, the other person always reminds you of that and so you go outside to look for somebody who doesn't remind you of that and, and that's the new relationship but you know you were in a situation, your husband was having problems, but you know, yes. it wasn't as extreme as a stroke, for example, where you no. literally are crippled mm. Mm. from something like that. How, you know, what do you say to the woman who actually wants to leave, but, you know, but feels incredible guilt? Uh, Counselling. Go and talk to somebody. And it's actually, impossible yeah. to bear that burden mm. just sitting there. I believe actually you've got to be true to yourself first, mm -hmm. absolutely your own self first and do what's right for you and then the rest will, will flow and as hard as that can be and, and you have to hurt other people, you still have to be absolutely mm. true to yourself first. But who's going yeah. to look after the 
husband, if he's a stroke victim, for example, if you decide this yes, is just uh, not... Yes, well, I couldn't leave mm. in that circumstance, in all honesty. That would be hard. It, and that's the thing, and I think it really boils down to if the relationship is strong yes. from the outset, which it clearly was in your situation, yes, wasn't yes. it? I mean, you didn't it even actually, it think about it. It actually strengthens it, mm. because you focus on the reasons you were together in the first place, and the rest of it is a skin mm. bag. It's just a body, really. Mm. Uh, you don't even think about mm. You don't even know. Uh, if you were describing your husband on a day-to-day -day basis or your wife, mm. it's not something you even think about. If, if, if there are gaps or cracks in the relationship, a crisis will make them bigger. Make them bigger, and if there aren't, they're not there, it maybe will bring you, you stronger. Bring mm. you together. Now that's this is we're talking serious crisis here, but yes. let's mm. look at um, a, a lighter crisis <laughs> for some yes. people. Want to be the affair? How does a, a middle-aged woman accept an affair? She it's usually, the hardest thing. she mm. usually doesn't. Right. It's actually it, it's a huge crisis of confidence to know that your husband is seeing somebody young, thin, blonde and 16 <laughs> years younger than you. Yeah. Oh. And you look in the mirror, it, it is actually, it's a shock. But, as you've, but all, as you've always said, the, when somebody has an affair, it's not usually about the person that they are um, cheating on. No. It's about themselves. Mm. A friend of mine, her husband left her for a much younger woman and she said, made this comment, which I'll never forget, which was just heartbreaking. She said, I felt like I was thrown on the scrap heap. You yes. do. But the truth is, and, and what we don't realise at the time, it's actually not about us. Yeah. It's, that's his journey. And the hardest thing to accept and, and get over is that it actually, you're, you're a victim in this journey. Mm. Mm. Yes. Effectively, you can do nothing about it. But it actually isn't about you, it's about him and his journey. But then, saying that, how can you then stay in a marriage when, you, when you're the victim? Is it, is it possible? I can't answer that question. No, and I couldn't answer that question either. As you get older, because you're not worried about um, financially looking after children, mm. you're looking after yourself and you're seeing one person day to day who is mm. reminding you daily that that you were passed over for a moment? Well, it's about losing trust, and if you can get that trust back, I think if your relationship is strong, mm. I mean, we all have blips in relationships, whatever it is. Um, if your relationship is strong and, and you can recreate that trust, I think it, it's hard, and you'd have to do it together and work hard at it, but if both parties want to do that, they can. It's they get to one. the underlying reason, mm. I think. That's the problem, mm. getting to the underlying reason. And then moving on. Yes. I just think for some women, or men as well, because mm. uh, men are not the only ones who cheat, no. it's that idea of just getting over it. And I think for a lot of women it would be very hard to do. You'd be constantly... It is. Yes, well, very often by the time the male or, or somebody, the other person in the marriage has um, decided that this new relationship is not really what they wanted and they want to come back, mm. the other person's moved on. I always mm. say, where does the affair start? Does it start flirting at the coffee machine in the office, or does it start when you actually have sex? That's right, and a lot of people say that it's the intention of it, yes. not, uh, not often the act of it. It's That's right, when you suddenly, the first decide to... The woman is the part. emotional side, the men is the physical bit. Exactly. Really, really interesting, ladies. Thank you so much, and uh, we've really enjoyed having you on the show these last few weeks, and best of luck with your website, Wiser Now. Thank Brilliant you. stuff. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. And for more on Geraldine and Raywin, see our website. Coming up on Monday, we'll reveal our great school holiday kids cook-off competition. Rapidly rising soprano Annalise belts out some Marla. The host of the new look Erin Simpson show joins us. Who will be dropped from MasterChef? Catch them in the Good Morning Kitchen. And we review new movie Red Riding Hood on Monday. Have a safe week in New Zealand. Kaki te Monday. Kaki te.